Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over why Dark Mantle is overrated. I'm going to be going over how for Dagger it is not even better than current Phase 4 Abyss, how as a Sword Rogue it's barely better than current Phase 4 Abyss, uh, but maybe not something that's worth getting uh, for your character, and how it is not Abyss in Phase 5 for Sword or Dagger. I'm going to start by going over how it is, performs better in Spreadsheet than it does in game. I'm then going to go over how daggers struggle to not waste energy from the dark mantle procs and get reduced value from it for that reason. I'm finally going to give a conclusion on whether or not the gear is worth getting for your character. Also want to throw out a quick disclaimer, I have all the Shadowcraft gear, I'm going to be getting the set. Uh, I am someone who was actually very high on Shadowcraft uh, back in the early phases of Classic and was a proponent of it. Uh, as being pre-raid best in slot. So I am someone who, who does value the proc. Um, however, I do think currently uh, it is very overrated in the rogue community. To start, I want to look at Shadowcraft because Shadowcraft is actually in the game and we can compare it to uh, other sets of gear that are also in the game and draw conclusions on how valid the simulations in the spreadsheets are for Shadowcraft, and that can help us get an idea of how accurate the spreadsheets will be for Dark Mantle. So to start, I wanted uh, to look at the Garcia spreadsheet. This is going to be version 1.6.5, which is the most recent version. This is the most popular rogue spreadsheet, and I'm gonna be going through for phase two, uh, how good was Shadowcraft? And so I've taken the best in slot phase two gear, and I also disabled the Zandalar world buff because um, it wasn't out yet. And we're going to compare the best in slot gear to the Shadowcraft gear. And uh, I'll also show you really quickly that the Dark Mantle and Shadowcraft uh, energy procs are treated the same way in the spreadsheet. So it will be a fair comparison between Dark Mantle and Shadowcraft. So you can see here, I went ahead and I set the spreadsheet to Shadowcraft six set and our DPS went up by 52.3. Now I'll just control Z that away and set the Dark Mantle 4 set to true. And you're gonna see that that is also 52.3 DPS. So just to start with, uh, you know, Dark Mantle and Shadowcraft are treated the same in the spreadsheet, just like uh, we expect them to be the exact same in the game. Real quickly, I'll just you know, say I'm using the standard combat swords build that comes with the spreadsheet. So, uh, you know, I'm taking no liberties there. So what we have here is just the phase two best in slot. You know, you got your tier, you got your bracers, the eclipse, uh, all those goodies. And I try to go through and make sure all the enchants were up to date too. So no shoulder enchants or anything crazy um, appropriate for the time in phase two. And uh, you can see we're cranking out 1,059 DPS. But if I go through and replace each of the pieces except for the head and the legs, with Shadowcraft, uh, you're actually going to see a damage increase, believe it or not. And you can do this uh, with a spreadsheet yourself. You can go through, just put in the Shadowcraft pieces and uh, your damage actually went up, which is really surprising to me because uh, Shadowcraft was not considered better than the phase two best in slot gear. It wasn't considered best in slot in phase two. Um, and even though it's only half a percent better, Right, even if you're accounting the increased resistance and health of the the phase two best in slot gear, you'd expect a lot more Shadowcraft to have been around in phase two. And you did have people using it for, for pre-raid, but personally myself, I use Shadowcraft and I replaced it once I was close to having all the phase two BIS items and I saw a, a decent increase in damage when I decided to take off my Shadowcraft and so this does not uh, match my experience uh, playing the game with Shadowcraft. And I do not think that uh, this is accurately calculating the value of Shadowcraft when you actually play the game. And I think it's evidenced by how few people were using this set. I mean, it, the, the spreadsheet is saying that it's best in slot and yet, you know, no one opted for it. Uh, over Shadowcraft when they had all the available items, at least no one to my knowledge, right? So so that's the first thing I wanna go over. Uh, we can also go check out daggers. So if I swap this over to combat dagger for the talents 
and I switch over to phase two bis dagger gear and I zero out the numbers, uh, I can flip over to phase two bis dagger shadowcraft and things are a little different because you use the aged core leather gloves uh, still with the shadowcraft. So instead of swapping out uh, the the legs are getting swapped out, or excuse me, the uh, the head is getting swapped out for Shadowcraft. Meanwhile, it was Bloodfang for, for Sword. So uh, you can see in this case, it was even more significant. 1.2% increase to damage using Shadowcraft as daggers. And I mean, this if you'd think 1.2% is not significant, this is actually a bigger increase than Dark Mantle is supposed to be over your phase four gear. So if you think that the phase two best in slot gear would be better than phase two Shadowcraft, like the traditional best in slot gear would be better than Shadowcraft for phase two, I mean, wouldn't that also follow that the, the Dark Mantle gear would not be best in slot when it comes out compared to the phase four best in slot gear? Uh, so I just wanted to point out that Shadowcraft sims incredibly well uh, and way past my expectations and what I've experienced in game. And as someone who did use Shadowcraft for a long time as Dagger and I switched away from it, this does not match my experience uh, in, in the damage I was doing. And so uh, next we're going to look at, at Dark Mantle and the difference between Dark Mantle and Current Bis and just keep in mind uh, the the values for Shadowcraft and how that might affect that gear. All right, now I've pulled up the Phase 4 BIS gear. Again, this is exactly what comes with the spreadsheet, so you can follow along. And I'll start with Dagger this time. And uh, we'll go ahead and load in a Dark Mantle, uh, basically just four pieces different. We went ahead and put in the Dark Mantle bracers, the belt, the cap, and the the chest and we got the, the four set going. And you can see that it's only a 10 DPS upgrade and it's only 0.8%, uh, not even a 1% increase. And so uh, not, not a very significant difference. In fact, like I mentioned earlier, a smaller difference uh, than the difference between Shadowcraft and the, t the phase two best in slot gear. And so, I mean, this is gonna sound weird to say, but getting Dark Mantle is going to be a smaller upgrade than it would have been for you to change all your Phase 2 BIS gear to Shadowcraft. Uh, and so this is, uh, I mean, even if we trust the Sims to a T, it's important, it's only 10 DPS. Next, we'll take a look at the Phase 4 BIS Sword gear, and we'll be looking at the just again default template and the combat swords built in talents uh, that, that come with the spreadsheet and we'll switch over to the phase four bis dark mantle set which is the same gear we just added in the dark mantle cap the dark mantle chest the dark mantle boots as well as the the dark mantle gloves now you can see it's a bigger increase for sword than it was for dagger and that's because dark mantle gloves are actually really good. And because you don't have aged core leather gloves that you have to worry about, you can safely use those as sword. And also sword spec is going to give you more shadowcraft procs as well. So uh, definitely a, a bigger increase. And because the sword increase actually is more significant, uh, sword, I would see a more of an argument to go for dark mantle and sword is likely going to be best in slot as dark mantle uh, going from phase four bis moving into uh, moving into phase five next i wanted to go over how easy it is to waste energy with dark mantle during your adrenaline rush as a dagger rogue and so i just wanted to show like a typical fight how your adrenaline rush pans out and just go over the times where like throughout the fight uh, with your adrenaline rush up, when would be a good time for a dark mantle proc? So you can see I get up my slice and dice at the start. I'm going to use adrenaline rush right before the energy tick to get that extra tick of energy with a 40 energy bonus. Uh, I immediately am at 100 energy uh, before this blade flurry. So obviously at 100 energy, a dark mantle proc wouldn't have been completely useless. After I use my blade flurry, a dark mantle proc would have not gotten full value, only 25 energy instead of 35, so that wouldn't have been a good time for it. 
uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press a backstab here and by the time my uh, my backstab comes back up you can see we have 56 energy so this actually would have been a good time for a dark mantle proc uh, in my case I play orc so I actually ended up using a GCD on blood fury here and so in my case only as an orc or only as a troll you'd have the issue here it wouldn't have been a good spot for me but we'll count this uh, as most people who don't play orc this would have been a good time for a dark mantle proc in the next uh, like second as you would have been able to spend it before the next energy tick so we'll count this as number one this is the first time we've had a, a window for a dark mantle proc uh, then as soon as you get your tick up to 96 energy obviously before you press backstab after you hit 96 energy that would have been a bad time for a proc I go ahead and stab right away and while this normally at 36 energy this would have been a good time for a proc unfortunately because I am using Renataki and I am looking for an opportunity when I am I have an option to, to go ahead and get that Renataki out uh, I did see that I had uh, a bit up to 60 energy I could restore so I, I went ahead and used my Renataki there so I actually did end up uh, using my Renataki instead of giving an opportunity for the Dark Mantle proc so unfortunately that would not have been a good time for a Dark Mantle proc because even when it seems like it's a good time, that's when you're going to be using Thistle D. That's when you're going to be using Renataki. And the reason you use those cooldowns during your Adrenaline Rush is because you are going to be using other DPS cooldowns. Like if you don't use Renataki and you use Earth Strike or Jomp Gabar instead, you're going to want to Thistle T during your Adrenaline Rush. You're going to want to use all the cooldowns at once so they're like multiplicatively applying all their bonuses. Uh, the same reason here, when you have your Adrenaline Rush up and your Blade Flurry up, you want to be using your, your Thistle T and your Renataki, especially on an AoE fight. Um, so you can see here, because of the Renataki, this would not have been a good time for an energy tick. Uh, by the time my energy comes back and uh, I would have wasted any energy there, uh, I would have been up to 76 energy. So again, I would have wasted about uh, 10 energy there. But you can see now, okay, we found another window. We're down to 16 energy. This is a good time for a Dark Mantle proc. But unfortunately, like I mentioned, this is a window where I decide to use Thistle T. And so because I use Thistle T and immediately backstab and immediately go back up to 80 energy, there was actually no window there for Dark Mantle to proc either. And uh, so, you know, I, no good time for, for Dark Mantle there. Because I go ahead and press Slice and Dice, that keeps my energy pretty high. So pretty much this entire duration, any Shadow Crab proc would have been wasted in between that backstab and this upcoming backstab. And you can see, um, right as I get my backstab off, I go up to uh, to 60 energy. And so if if my energy, if my Shadow Crab proc would have came in a little too soon, I would have wasted energy there. Now this is a window where uh, dark mantle proc would be good and as my adrenaline rush is ending you can see towards the end of the duration there were a couple windows uh, where it could have been good so those last few seconds there was like two spots where where the dark mantle proc could have gone off and now with the rest of the fight it's it's less of an issue but you can see throughout the entire fight pausing almost every second every half second uh, there was really only two to three times during the duration of the adrenaline rush that dark mantle would have been good to proc and so that's like basically 90 percent of the time during your adrenaline rush you're going to waste either all of the energy or a lot of the energy from dark mantle and there's really not a lot you can do to avoid that except try to do as little slice and dicing as possible during your adrenaline rush and not using energy uh, consumes I guess to increase your energy during the duration but like I mentioned that's actually going to reduce your damage more than I would suggest the, the dark mantle chance of it you know proccing would help so I think it would be a mistake to not use your your energy during your adrenaline rush all your energy on use abilities uh, so the conclusion there is almost the entirety of your adrenaline rush as a dagger rogue dark mantle procs will be wasted this means that if you get Dark Mantle procs during your, your cooldown window, your burst phase, they're going to have reduced to, to little value, right? Depending on when they proc. And this puts you in a really awkward situation with Dark Mantle as a Dagger Rogue because 
if you were not proccing Dark Mantle during your cooldowns, well, that's terrible because that's the biggest burst of the fight. That's when you're cleaving down the adds. That's when you've got your adrenaline rush up. You're getting double, you know, double the abilities going out. You've got your T, you've got your Rinataki. That's the, the part of the fight where you're doing as much damage, uh, more damage than you ever will. But if you do get the Dark Mantle proc, it's gonna be wasted. So you're in like a catch-22, a lose-lose situation where if you're not getting procs during the duration, you're just better off using normal gear because you want to do as much damage as possible during your cooldowns because that's oftentimes either the most important part of the fight or that's the part of the fight where your gear is going to uh, matter the most because you're you know doing a large portion of your damage during that window. Rogues really burst very, very well, as I'm sure you know. You can pop all your cooldowns, fly up to the top of the damage meter, and then when they end, you're going to start you know trickling down. Uh, and so it's not good if you don't get a Dark Mantle proc during the duration because that means your gear is not helping you do more damage during your cooldowns but if it does proc it's probably going to be wasted and uh, it's going to have reduced value and if it's a really close call on whether or not to use dark mantle these are the kind of things where i want to do as much damage as possible during my cooldowns and i really think that you, you're potentially going to lose a lot of value on your adrenaline or on your dark mantle during that adrenaline rush and if you are using Blade Flurry during that duration, well, that increases your attack speed. That increases your chance to get Dark Mantle procs. So a decent number of the Dark Mantle procs you're expecting to get during a fight are going to come during that Blade Flurry because you do have an increased attack speed. You're going to get more than usual. And so uh, all in all, this is a big deal for me personally as to why uh, it felt bad playing Shadowcraft back in, in Phase 1 for me and why I think you're going to, and this is all damage losses that don't show up in a spreadsheet. And uh, I actually talked to uh, someone claiming to be Garcia. I mean, everything he said matched up, the creator of the spreadsheet. Uh, and I did double check with Garcia that, that they're not accounting for any loss in damage from energy. And uh, he said it's not accounting for that at all. The only thing the spreadsheet does is in a recent update, if you get consecutive Dark Mantle procs back to back, that it does um, cut away a portion of the energy. But nothing that I described here is accounted for in a spreadsheet. So these are examples of how the spreadsheet will incorrectly predict your damage as a Dagger Rogue. Now, there's more to it for Dagger Rogue too. You also can lose energy while trying to pull energy for slice and dice and you get a dark mantle proc at a bad time or if you're trying to use a swing timer on horde side as a dagger rogue to take advantage of wind fury weapon procs uh, you also can run into issues with dark mantle capping out your energy and, and you losing some of the value in this set but i think you get the idea uh, the dark mantle set is going to perform worse than what the spreadsheets approximate because of these potential losses of energy and you're put in a position where you either play differently which will cost you dps to try and keep your energy as low as possible um, but that kind of you know defeats the purpose of of upgrading your gear if, if you're going to have to play differently uh, and not pull energy not use a swing timer not stack your your energy boosting abilities during your adrenaline rush uh, there's there's no point in losing damage uh to to try and just not waste as many procs on your dark mantle so i hope it makes sense as to why uh, Dark Mantle is, you know, there's a really big risk of wasting energy as a Dagger Rogue. We went over the spreadsheets, how well it sims versus uh, how well Shadowcraft sims versus, you know, how the usage of Shadowcraft in Phase 2 and, and even after. And so uh, really this is going to be the conclusion of the video where I, I tell you, you know, who, who should actually get this this gear because it, it does take you know a lot of time to grind especially if you still haven't grinded the, the armor out it's going to cost a lot of gold uh you're going to have to uh, once you have the shadowcraft armor you're going to have to do the the quest chain that is going to be you know a decent amount of of dungeons so it is time consuming it costs money especially uh grinding the dungeon pieces that takes a lot of effort so the question is who is this set good for and so all this talk about losing damage uh, gaining damage uh, I personally am going to be getting the set uh, because I am missing many pieces from Black Mean Lair, particularly the, the Blood Fang chest, the Blood Fang wrists, and the Blood Fang belt. And so I can use Dark Mantle in all of those slots and lose a minimal amount of DPS.
So uh, for me, I think it makes sense. Likewise, for anyone who is playing dagger and is undergeared, I think it is a great idea to get Dark Mantle as catch-up gear. And uh, as you get closer to the Phase 4 Abyss, you probably, I would recommend you take it off for not only the consistency, but the, the increased damage on average, uh, I would say. Uh, also, uh, anyone who is, you know, just doesn't raid, right? This is, this is amazing gear for, for doing any sort of PvE. Although I would not recommend Dark Mantle for PvP. Then on to Swords. Uh, swords run us into a lot less issues. Uh, you don't have to worry as much about capping out on energy. Uh, it still can happen. It still can happen if you try and pull energy. Uh, or if you're trying to use a swing timer in, and your procs come in at a bad time. But it, it's a much less reduced issue. And it also is just better for Sword. So I would say that I am expecting the Dark Mantle set to be just a little bit better than current bis uh, so if you are bis as a sword rogue i wouldn't say that it's necessary to get as you're probably going to gain a, a really small amount of damage uh, but it is something you can do if you want to do as much damage as possible it'll i would say give you less than a one percent increase would be my guess uh, based on how overrated i think the dark mail is and it could uh, could even be less than that i do expect uh that uh Again, even bigger argument for any undergeared sword rogues out there. If you're a sword rogue and you're missing a lot of pieces, definitely get Dark Mantle. That's that's the person I would really recommend uh, to get Dark Mantle is someone who, who raids, takes their damage seriously, and uh, wants to do as much damage as possible, but does not have the greatest gear yet and, and is a sword rogue. Um, so if you're, if you're really undergeared, get it. If you are playing swords and you want every possible edge, uh, give it a go. And if you, uh, otherwise I would just, I would hold off. I would pass on it and uh, you know, get it if you wanna do the quest chain, get it if you enjoy farming out the armor and uh, wanna get a cool new set. But I do think it's important to keep in mind just, it's not going to be a massive upgrade. If you don't have dark mantle, it's fine. You're not going to be, you know, just getting slaughtered on the meters. And it's best case is really as catch up gear. So thanks for watching guys uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Also, check out my Twitch in the description below. I stream every day. I really stream more than I make YouTube videos, really. Uh, so drop by, ask any questions you have about Rogue or Classic, and I will see you there.